All right, well, today's chore is going to make a pair of these guys. This is the little strap that holds the trunnion down on the cannon. Now, all said and done, this is about the half the size of your little finger, and that's a 3 8 diameter running through the center. That's just shy of a 10 millimeter hole right here in the middle, okay? 3 8 diameter. This is about 2.5 millimeter rounds on the end, and this will be made out of brass. And you know, you could take a piece of sheet metal and bend this thing up, but that wouldn't be any fun being an OCD Virgo toolmaker. I have to do these little features on the end. And you know, when the time comes calling, I'll probably knock these rounds out of it as well. I'm going to do this on a rotary table. I'm going to do it from a chunk of inch and a quarter square brass. And I'm going to do it standing up, go to side mill, climb the entire part and put it back in for the secondary, knock these little square holes in it, probably do a click spring job on it with a nice little square file. And this area right in here as well is, see where the cursor is jumping around the arrow? This little round right here is going to have to be done by hand as well inside. So that's the hinge when you go to unloosen the barrel from the carriage. <laughs> you pull the pin out of the front part on this side, that's really hard to do that by hand. There you go. There will be a projection coming up here, a cross pin, and in the back will be anchored down with a cleat. So what they would do is they would pull the pin and this thing would pivot up and you could lift the barrel clear of the carriage. Now to do this on a rotary table, it's no big deal. We're going to find all the information that we know is a, is a definite. Let me see if I can position that for you. Actually, let's just go up here where I've already got it defined. Ba -ba -da, call it the hinge. There you go. We're going to punch a hole in the center. Yeah, I'm going to interpolate it, actually. And then I'm going to do another hole here, another hole here, one down here, and one down here. And then all we have to do is walk up the back side, interpolate this round, come back to this offset right here, interpolate this round, offset, interpolate that round. On a CNC machine this would be about 30 seconds to knock that part out. It would be really quick to do. But on a rotary table, how many different setups do we have here? Well, I'll tell you, we have three for sure. We have one for the round on this end, one for the round on this end, and one for the center inside and outside features. Now to look at it, relatively simple part, but when you start to spin this part, everything starts to get a little bit different. I am going to initially place my cutter here, and because I want a climb cut, this is where I'm going to start, and I need to know in degrees how far until we get over here. Same thing with the top. I'm going to start my cutter on the outside over here, and as the part spins, it will create a, a climb cut and I want to travel all the way around until I get here. Now it's easy to do with CAD. All I need to do is just start picking a bunch of spots like this. And it'll tell me exactly how far I have to go. But to just show you something like that really doesn't do you any good without seeing the mechanics behind it. So it wouldn't be a Joe Pye video if I didn't end up on the whiteboard, right? So let's take a walk in the office. I'll show you the mechanics behind figuring that out. So if you ever care to mess around with something like this, it's not as scary as it may seem initially. And this is certainly one of those things that will sneak up on you, and you'll be into the job, and you'll be turning a crank, and you'll go, well, okay, well, I don't know where to stop. So you'll blend it and lie about how you did it. All right, let's go over to the board, and I will show you the numbers. Okay, guys, let's take a look at how the end of that thing is formed and the information that you need to know in order to do that on a rotary table. The rotation of the cutter is going clockwise, so I want to climb around the outside. Now the cutter is not going to move, the part is going to spin reverse to form a climb cut scenario. So what we need to do is figure out the distance in angle, how far around we need to go in order to get tangent to the two surfaces on the finished part. Now it's really not that hard. You know the thickness of the part here is 050. 1.27 millimeters. The cutter diameter is 140, 3.55 millimeters. So the radius of each is your offset, that's your starting point. 
and I know that this plane right here is the center line of the large trunnion mount, so this is a zero plane. There's your offset. This dimension is on the print. Not a big deal. When it comes time to come all the way around, the angle, the only triangle that you need to figure out is this triangle right here. And this triangle is replicated in blue right there. The long leg of this particular triangle will be the radius of the end. This is a 100 diameter, 2.54 millimeters. So we're going to go with the radius plus the radius of the cutter. The cutter is 140 thou, 3.55 millimeters. So when you gang them up, it's 0 0.120 or 3.048 millimeters. Once you have that and you have the radius of the cutter, which you have right here, the two sides will give you the angle. And you can see we're just going to go in quads here. 90 degrees to the top, 90 degrees to the corner. So whatever angle this is comes out of the third quadrant of 90 degrees. The resulting angle on that move is 234.315 degrees. I've seen a lot of guys say, all right, well, that's almost 32 minutes, right? 234 degrees, 32 minutes. No, wrong. It's 0.315 of 60 minutes. So it's not 31 minutes. It's not 32 minutes. It translates to, and this is the easiest way to do it, take the 0.315 and multiply that times 60. Pretty sure that's the way to do it. Let's do it. 315 times 60, 18.9. So 234 degrees, 18.9 minutes. How many seconds is 0.9? You do the exact same thing again. Take that 0.9, multiply it times 60, 54. So this translates to 234 degrees, 18 minutes, 54 seconds. Do not get caught turning a decimal into a minute value straight up. It's going to bite you every time. You think about it, 30 minutes is half of 60, right? So you would say, oh, that's 0.5. 234, 31 minutes, 0.5, close enough? No. 18, you're going to be almost a quarter of a turn off, and you're going to bark to park. Not that hard to do. We're going to try to do all the linears first. I'm going to do the big inner and outer radiuses of that trunnion clamp strap, whatever it's called. Initially, I will plunge these holes, and then we're going to set up and we're going to do the profile probably in a couple of steps. I'm going to move the entire vise to do this. I am not going to move the part. I will locate the part initially on the trunnion center line and go everything from there with hard stops. So let's take a walk out to the mill, put a 140 diameter cutter. 3.55 millimeters, and uh, let's chew up some brass. Hey guys, one more small detail. I didn't want to assume anything. On these features, on the center, on the ends, each time you set up for a different round feature on the table, the rotary table, the center of the feature has to be over the center of the rotary table. Super important. If you don't do that, God knows what you're going to end up with, all right? So when I start shifting this piece around for these end features, I will be moving the entire vise to put the center of each feature over the center of the rotary table. Keep that in mind. First step, indicate the rotary table true to the spindle. And I'll tell you, ever since having learned this technique, I don't do this any other way than what you're looking at right here. You can put an indicator in your spindle and sweep your table, but if you want to get working mechanism, true to working mechanism, you must spin the rotary table. If you have a digital readout on your machine, do yourself a huge favor right now. Go from the absolute position zero, go over to incremental and zero that out as well. Okay, no matter what you do with your table, I'll put it back to absolute, no matter what you do with your table, you have a home position on your digital and you can always come back to the center. On the off chance that you re-zero for some feature or 
dimension. The incremental will be the storage for the home position. It's worked out well in the past. Let's put a vise up there. Drew up a piece of brass. This piece. Okay, before we get started, I think it's really important when you do a job like this that you realize exactly what you're getting yourself into. I'm going to center this part about the rotary table right here on these red dots. Each one of these is a rotational center for a round feature. Now it's really important that you look ahead of the actual first setup and say, okay, well what needs to be done ultimately? Okay, this part needs to shift. It needs to shift in both directions. And how are you going to do that? Once the vise is set on the rotary table, well, a little planning goes a long way. And here's how I'm going to do it. Here's the vise. For this particular offset between the main center and the centers of the end features, I'm going to call those the returns, it has to shift 50 thou this way. So that's easy to do. If you have a stop, pull it out, drop in 50 thousandths worth of precision shims or gauge blocks, and return it. Uh, we are now 50 thou off center into the part. All right, for the y axis moves, I know that I have to go 600 off center one way and 500 off center the other way. So I created my stack behind the part with a 600 block. Oh, look at that difference in that light. Let's turn that backlight off. Whoa, there you go. Backlight compensation. Strikes again. This is a 600 block, so when I pull the 600 block out and slide the part, you can see that the pointer is now over the front feature. 50 thou into the part, 600 off center. When it comes time to do the opposite side, I will return the original 600 block in there and at the appropriate spacer which is 500 and the parallels are exactly 500 I measured them and as soon as I cinch it back up the pointer is over the front feature now the only problem with moving things around on a rotary table is occasionally the slots don't line up for clamping and you may have a little issue with that which is why I have this little floater block right here this is a block that I can use to position clamps wherever I want them so it's basically like having an infinite number of T-slots so I will ultimately clamp between the jaws on that using the clamp as my registration point and then just build a stack of blocks up for the heel so a little planning on the setup goes a long way. This should go well, and i got to tell you, this will be the second time that I shoot this for you guys. There are two burps on these pieces, on this particular part, that made me absolutely crazy. You can see it right there. Front side is beautiful. All right, you can see that the back side of this part has a dig, and the reason for that is when I roughed the front of this, I stayed away from that surface. When I rotated in the roughing mode, I rotated the complete angle on the print. Since I was off of this surface, basically what that did was put me forward of my advance on the angle, and I should have choked up. The only choking up that was going on was when I looked at this part and realized that I had run that end mill into that part. Broke my heart. But it will allow me to say exactly what happened, and it made me crazy trying to figure that out. I stayed 20 thou off of this surface. When it rotated, it affected the angle. Dug in on this side. I never saw that coming. Thank goodness I got more material. Anyway, let's load a piece of material in here. Get to it. First thing I'm going to do to set this up is I'm going to make sure that my vise is going to present the material in such a manner that the cutter doesn't run off the material and not make the part. Actually, I want the cutter to go off the material, but I still want to make sure I have enough material in the vise to make the part. I'm going to locate the back jaw using my fancy little tool here. And 
And as of the time I'm shooting this video, these guys are still in stock. If you're still interested in getting one, after seeing this, you'll know exactly how they're used. This is currently on center. This is 500 out. I want this back jaw 300 in so that the features that I start in this vise are 300 in from that jaw. So right now I'm going to push my table this way, 300. I'm going to drop the tool down. Spindle is open. I'm going to drive the vise back against the stops and up against the pin. Boom. Okay, going to go around the back and put a clamp on the back side of that. Make sure that everything is right up against. If you have any doubt whatsoever about a setup like this, put a parallel or a piece of waste material in here and actually clamp on this pin, and that'll make sure that you are exactly where you think you are. put a parallel in here as well. This particular table clamp on the end is strictly a stop that's going to trap this parallel and allow me to make that 050 offset when it comes time to do the small returns on the end of this clamp. Strap, clamp, whatever you want to call it. Okay. That is absolutely perfect. Parallels. Through. I'm going to visually center this material in the vise because I know the vise is centered about the table. And the very first thing I'll do is form a radial undercut in the center of that by plunging an end mill and take as much material as I can off the back of this so that the little cutter I'm going to go in there with doesn't have to work too hard. Let's change cutters up. Continue. Step one, 5 16 diameter plunge right here just to remove the majority of the material. Using the same 5 16 end mill I will offset the radius of the cutter plus a little bit and trough the blank so that the small end mill doesn't have to do it. Then I'm going to put a 375 end mill in, plunge it, and finish this back face. Everything else is going to be blend. I will explain that as we go. Okay, first thing, 5 16 plunge, 5 16 cut, 3 8 plunge, 3 8 finish pass. Let's do it. Let's open up that center hole to 3 8 and start some contour work. Table is back on zero, 3 8 cutter coming down. Next step in the sequence is to plunge a 140 diameter end mill 
where all these internal corner rounds are, I am going to stay away X and Y on all this plunge work and I will connect the holes once I do this. This will not be a finished surface at this time. But the cutter matches the radius by design and it should be relatively easy. This is going to look like a drilling op. I'm just going to pop four little holes in there. now go in on location. Corner rounds are complete. Let's connect the holes and make these little high spots go away. You can see how this is coming together. Then we will reposition the tool to this location right here. Walk it around the outside, form the outside of the hoop. Now you may have heard me say in the past that you do not have to worry about the starting point from the center of your rotary table to your first radial feature when you swing an arc. All you need to know is the degrees between the start and the stop point. I'm going to take my cutter at this point, I'm going to walk it over and I'm going to bring it right back to this location right here and start my arc. The table is set on zero, the rotary table is set on zero. This may actually be like a 20 degree or 25 degree projected angle between these two but once you've moved up and over it doesn't matter. All we want to do is this. We want to jump up and over leaving a 50 thou hoop right there. All of this work can be done with the table on center with the part on center and with the everything epicentered about the world right in that main bore. So watch for the cutter to come around and knock this material off. I'll do this in several steps. Now remember the sample that I showed you in the beginning. I did stay away from the radius and when I came around full swing that's when I hit the inside. I was really disappointed with that but it was a learning experience for me and I kind of like that because I don't make too many mistakes and when it happens it just gives me another tool that something that I've learned that I will remember. I am going to cut this outer radius right now by eye. I'm going to stay about 20 thou from the finished surfaces and I'm just going to come around a couple times and when the cutter breaks through I'm not going to worry about tangent right now. I just want to remove the bulk of the material so the final pass is a very low load uh, situation. So here we go.
Let's go a little bit further so you can get a look at that. You can see that the part is forming nicely. And that the corner round behaved itself a little bit better. I like it. going to clean all the debris off from around all of our stops and when I make the shift by removing my 600 spacer and putting in the 050 shims along this edge I will show you that as it happens when the machine is clean. Okay I need to offset the part 50 thou on the X and 600 on the Y. This is where I lose my ability to keep the vise clamped in the slots on the table. And the first thing you do is unloosen the clamp on the vise and slide that 600 spacer that you made out of the way. I'm going to shoot the vise against the back table. Now I'm going to add 50 thou worth of shims to right here, back against the stop. Okay, life is good. We are now over the end detail on this part, and I'll show you that on the print before I cut it. We're also going to climb this. I'll explain that as it happens. Let me clamp this down. We'll get back to you. Alright, by pulling the 600 block out of the back, the part effectively slid that way, putting the center of the rotary table over here, and by moving the vise this way with the shims, we put the center of the rotary table right here. Now in order to maintain a climb cut finish, which is what I want, all I need to do is find the center of this radius right here and know what the sweep is to come around the back. So depending on the size of the cutter, it's a 140 diameter cutter, so I'm going to step 50 thou off center because this plane is even with the center line of this radial feature on the end. And the difference between these two dimensions is 097 and a half. So I will set this up in the digital, drop the cutter down in there off the part initially so that I can take a nice light finish pass, and we will form our first return at the 600 dimension. Let's take a look. I'm going to stay away initially until I have the majority of the material removed, then I will come back on location and sweep it twice. Once for dimensional and the next one for flex. Here we go.
Now we have to do the exact same thing on this end. And to do that, we are going to leave the shims set right where they are because the two center lines of these returns are identical. But we're going to return the 600 spacer block in the rear of the vise and then we're going to add a half inch parallel. The 600 is going to take it back to center. The half inch parallel will move it up here. And then we will shift the cutter to the outside to start the climb cut and come around. Let's change the setup and make that happen. Alright, the vice shift has been made and you can see the utility of that little floating clamp block that I'm using. That works like a charm. You don't always have T-slots that line up to allow you to clamp, so a couple of those things, that really helps out. Still have the 50 thou shim to kick the block off center, kick the whole vise off center, I haven't moved the block yet. And in the back, I returned the 600 block from the original setup, which brought it back to center and added a half inch parallel, which brought it to the opposite end of the part. Now all I have to do is step the cutter off the radius of the cutter to this side and run the return on that end. I will stay away from it initially like I did on the front side here and we'll remove a lot of material and come back in for the kill with a light final pass. Alright for this final step we got a little different camera set up, turn some lights out, camera automatic is kicking in so it gives it that more of a blue tint. I'm sure the fluorescent lights don't help, there's no filter on this camera. I'm going to step off 70 thou which is half the cutter diameter that way Actually, I'm going to step off more than that, so I have some remaining material. Take a couple of passes, and we will form the final return on the 500 end. Let's do it. That I misspoke. I need to offset from the radius of the feature out and then half of the cutter. So we're not looking for 70 this time like we were last time. We're looking for 120 as the final. And I'm going to start off at around 135. I think we have a part that looks almost like the drawing. That's always a good thing. Let's freehand walk around the top of this, clean it up, put it across the bandsaw, and remove the part and give it a little bit closer inspection on the bench. Now to everybody out there that's ever tried the mill skill challenge at the Bar Z Industrial Summer Bash, this is what it's all about right here. and clean the top of that off.
basically for that blade to stop before you reach in there, guys. Big time important. All right, there's the part. I'm going to clean it up, and we'll take a closer look on the bench. I will also show you the process, how I clean these things up. Actually, why not just film it? Let's go over my buffers and take a look. Okay guys, there is the final result. Looks like the print. We've got our return on both ends. That comes back around nicely. And there is still about a thousand dip right there. I have to believe that is from plunging the cutter. There is no other explanation for that. But you can see from the first one that we did, or the first one that I did, night and day difference in that particular corner. So be careful when you rough these things out. When you start spinning stuff around, you just end up on the wrong side of the line that you thought you were on. And that's what happened here. That's a heartbreaker right there. That kills me to see that. Anyway, there you go. Got to make one more. And this will be the trunnion clamp for the cannon barrel. So this is the guy that holds down the, bar the uh, barrel. It's a hinge. A lockable hinge. There you go. And I know I just saw me do this on a sander, but I will ultimately push this back up against the you know, jaw on the vise and clean it off with a mill, come down to a specific size so I can hold it and put the square holes in. I'm just going to drill those and create the corners with a file. There's no sense in wasting your time to see that. But if you want to see it, put it in the comment line, and I'll see if I can shoot it for you. But I do need to make another one of these so I can do two at a time. Well, not two at a time, but two separately done at the same time. As always, thanks for watching, guys. Very much appreciated. See ya.